Hi, James. I miss you so much. Can I come over? Actually, now isn't the best time. I'm working on grant proposals for the shelter, and I have to get everything done this week. Maybe some other time. No, tonight's the best time for me. I'm pretty swamped, Beverly. Rain check? You're just saying that we both know these shelters basically run themselves. Don't you want to spend some nice quality time with your baby sister? Fine, but just for a couple of hours. Is Marco coming? Oh, of course he is. He misses his uncle so much. Sure he does. And you promise he'll behave himself? Absolutely. He's growing into a real gentleman. Great. But just in case you have a lock on your liquor cabinet, right? You know, maybe we can just meet at a restaurant. Nonsense. Your house is so cozy. Okay, sure. Great. See you at six. See you then. Wonderful. I can't wait to see what you're going to cook for us. Good morning. I slept like a log last night. Couldn't pick up your call. Hope you've settled down after bombarding me with hundreds of calls. So you did hear my call, and you didn't bother to pick it up? Sorry, but if someone wakes me up at midnight, I'm bound to be a bit groggy. I'm sure I'm more awake now and ready to chat compared to last night. All my notes are torn up. Torn up papers? These are all the notes that I have for my grant application. Literally months of work. Okay. Why are they all torn up? Because your son snuck into my office during dinner and destroyed them. Oh. Why would he do this, Beverly? You just saw them now? Isn't it a little late to be working? It is. Because I had guests. Guests that decided to sneak around my house and destroy things. Calm down. It might just be a misunderstanding. Maybe it wasn't Marco. You really believe that? No, it was probably Marco. He gets restless sometimes, but it's not that big of a deal, right? You have everything saved on your computer, right? Not my notes. Well, it sounds like your own problem then. Always have a backup. Look, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but I'm sure you can tape it all back together in no time. I'm going back to sleep. Beverly, that is literally the worst apology I've ever heard. Well, you nearly kept me up all night. That's it. I'm done talking to you. We're not children, James. We're too old to hold grudges. And if you must know, you were right. And I'm sorry, and it shouldn't have happened. Good. And I've taken away Marco's Xbox for a week now. All he has is his old Nintendo. That's it? Don't tell me how to parent my son, James. You're not a father. I'm not, thank God. And if it makes you happy, Marco feels absolutely terrible for what he did. In fact, he made you this. He drew me a stick figure holding a rainbow. It's an apology card. He didn't even spell my name right. How long did it take him to make that? 20 seconds? It comes from the heart, James. Be a good uncle and accept it. Listen, I spent all night taping my stupid notes back together. I'm running on less than an hour of sleep, and I have to be at the shelter in 20 minutes. I don't have the energy to feign excitement over a half-assed crayon drawing from a 14-year-old who is way too old to still use crayons. Just leave me alone. <sighs> I hate that you're still mad at my poor son. Okay. Are you? Are you still mad? Yep. You were able to apply for those grants like you wanted. Yeah, we got some funds. Great. Then it's all water under the bridge, right? So can we see each other again? No. Don't bother. From now on, you and your son are not allowed in my house. Goodbye. Fine. If you want to push us away, go right ahead. You care more about your stupid homeless people than you do your own family. James, I know it's been a while, but we need to talk. I need your help. What? You're alive. You answered my text. What do you want? So in the last few months, Marco has really cleaned up his act. His grades are up. He's working hard. You'd be proud of your nephew. You really would. Great. So what's the problem? Well, like all rambunctious teenagers, he made one tiny little mistake. And you want me to help hide the body? No, it's nothing that serious. It was just a little shoplifting. But he regretted it right away. Okay. So he has to do some community service. The judge was too harsh on him, if you ask me. It really wasn't fair. I mean, who among us hasn't stolen things from time to time? I haven't. Of course not. You're Mr. Perfect. What do you want? Well, since he has to do a couple of hours of work, 
Since his loving uncle runs a homeless shelter, I thought that maybe he could help you. No. It won't be for long, just 200 hours. Christ, how much did he steal? Not a lot. I think the judge was a little hard on him because he resisted arrest, but it really wasn't that bad. And the cop only got a black eye. Beverly, as your brother, I say this from the very bottom of my heart. Your son needs therapy. Look at this. Marco picking up trash. Cool. Why are you sending me this? To show you what a hard worker your nephew is. Look at how full his bag is. He's really doing a great job with community service. I'm glad you found something that fits his skills. Well, it's not the best situation. He has to work side by side with real criminals. On the side of a busy street, it's very dangerous. I'm sure he'll be fine. He is such a hard worker, James. I mean it. Again, why are you telling me all this? Just to share a little bit about our lives. Look at all that trash. I'm pretty busy right now, Beverly. We have food deliveries coming in. If only Marco had a way to do the rest of his service somewhere indoors. Somewhere safer. Perhaps with a trusted relative watching over him? He's not going to work at the shelter. I already told you this. Oh, I know. I'm not asking. I'm just thinking out loud. And then typing your thoughts into your phone. Bye, Beverly. I'm glad Marco is doing so well. James, I know it's been a while, but we need to talk. I need your help. What? You're alive. You answered my text. What do you want? So in the last few months, Marco has really cleaned up his act. His grades are up. He's working hard. You'd be proud of your nephew. You really would. Great. So what's the problem? Well, like all rambunctious teenagers, he made one tiny little mistake. And you want me to help hide the body? No, it's nothing that serious. It was just a little shoplifting. But he regretted it right away. Okay. So he has to do some community service. The judge was too harsh on him, if you ask me. It really wasn't fair. I mean, who among us hasn't stolen things from time to time? I haven't. Of course not. You're Mr. Perfect. What do you want? Well, since he has to do a couple of hours of work, since his loving uncle runs a homeless shelter, I thought that maybe he could help you. No. It won't be for long, just 200 hours. Christ, how much did he steal? Not a lot. I think the judge was a little hard on him because he resisted arrest, but it really wasn't that bad. And the cop only got a black eye. Beverly, as your brother, I say this from the very bottom of my heart. Your son needs therapy. Look at this. Marco picking up trash. Cool. Why are you sending me this? To show you what a hard worker your nephew is. Look at how full his bag is. He's really doing a great job with community service. I'm glad you found something that fits his skills. Well, it's not the best situation. He has to work side by side with real criminals. On the side of a busy street, it's very dangerous. I'm sure he'll be fine. He is such a hard worker, James. I mean it. Again, why are you telling me all this? Just to share a little bit about our lives. Look at all that trash. I'm pretty busy right now, Beverly. We have food deliveries coming in. If only Marco had a way to do the rest of his service somewhere indoors, somewhere safer, perhaps with a trusted relative watching over him. He's not going to work at the shelter. I already told you this. Oh, I know. I'm not asking. I'm just thinking out loud. And then typing your thoughts into your phone. Bye, Beverly. I'm glad Marco is doing so well. Marco, where are you? Dude, sorry. I'm running a little late. I'll be there later. You were supposed to be here at 6. Yeah, but that's really early. Don't worry about it. I'll get there when I get there. What time? In an hour or two. No. If you expect me to sign off on your hours, you have to be here when I need you. We have breakfast to serve now. I'll make up my time later. I can stay all through the evening. But I don't need you in the evening. I need you now. Ugh, fine. Don't get so upset over nothing. I'll be there in 10. Okay. Hey, are you here right now? No, I'm meeting with some donors. Is there a problem? Of course there's a problem. These people are gross. There's this really creepy guy with one leg who asked for an extra bottle of water, but he got really close and he spat on me. On purpose? No, but it was still really gross, so I told him to leave. Marco, that was Paul. He's been coming here for years. He's a veteran, and his wife died of cancer. 
You can't just turn people away without telling me. Why not? Who cares if he's a veteran? I hate how people always say that veterans are better than the rest of us. I mean, come on. Last year, I had to take Snowball to the veteran, and he was a real jerk to us. Uh-huh. You know the difference between a veteran and a veterinarian, right? Yeah, totally. I'm not an idiot. The point is, he was a real loser, so I told him to leave. I don't see why guys like him can just get in line and ask for free stuff. It's not fair. Are you saying you're jealous of homeless people? No, I'm just asking if you ever considered the fact that these people don't deserve our help. We're done here. Please do your job. I am. And don't be disrespectful to anyone there. I'm not. Jeez. Hey, so you and Jenny served all the dinners, right? Yeah, I did my job, man. And you checked the kitchen to make sure everything was put back properly? Yes. Did Jenny help you with that? Nah, man. It was all me. I'm such a better worker than she is. So you're the only one who was in the kitchen after I left? Yeah. Why? Because several boxes of donated cream pies have gone missing. Oh, well, we served them. You weren't supposed to. Well, we did. I'm not lying. And if I checked with Jenny, she'd tell me the same thing? That you two passed out cream pies? Even though they weren't on the approved list for today? Uh, okay, we didn't. You misunderstood me. Then what happened to the missing boxes? I don't know, man. This is a homeless shelter. A lot of shady people come in here. Maybe someone took them. So you allowed people to go into the kitchen? No, but maybe someone did. You know we have a camera in the back of the shelter, right? If someone carried boxes out of the kitchen, I'd be able to look at the footage and see who it was, right? You know that. Fine. I took them. Okay. Thanks for telling me. I'm going to have to let you go. What? Do not come in tomorrow. And I will not be signing for any of the hours you've worked so far. That's not fair. I worked my ass off. You were constantly late. You were rude to literally everyone. You took breaks every ten minutes, and you stole from me. You can't do this. I hope you learn from your mistakes, Marco. Screw you, man. You can't do this, James. I assume Marco told you that I let him go. And yes, I won't let you do this. Did he tell you why he was fired? It doesn't matter, he's your nephew. I agreed to give him a chance, Beverly. And he blew it. I'm sorry. Fine, what did he do? I'm sure it wasn't that bad. He stole food. He was late every day. He was extremely rude to me, my staff, and the families that came to us. He's been toxic and entitled, and we can't have that kind of presence here. So you need me to pay for what food he stole? No. Then what do you need? I don't need anything from you. Sorry, this didn't work out. But he's really sorry. He even drew you a picture. No. He promises he won't do it again. That is exactly his problem, Beverly. He never faces the consequences of his actions. He has a mother who always covers for him and makes excuses. The only reason he does such terrible things is because he gets away with it. I'm not telling you how to be a mother, but come on. You have to admit that you've raised a monster. You're not going to fire Marco. <sighs> I already did. No, you're not. I don't know if you know this, but Marco is a very gifted photographer. He's got real talent. And when he was working for you, he took a lot of pictures. Like these. Do you see what I see? I don't know that man. Well, do you see the drugs in his hand? James, so you're not going to answer? So I'm just going to answer for you. Yes. You see the man breaking the law, don't you? What are you doing? I'm just showing you the evidence Marco collected. The man has illegal substances on your property. Isn't that right? Isn't he in your parking lot? I don't know who that person is. Yet he's still on your property, isn't he? Well, what would happen if someone came forward with these photos? Would he get in trouble? Would you get in trouble for allowing it? We're in a difficult area, Beverly. If something like this happens, we call the police right away. But you didn't. Because I didn't know. Isn't it your job to know? I don't understand what you're getting at. If Marco witnessed a crime, he should go to the police. 
I'm not stopping you. Good to know. I think we'll do that. And when we do, I think Marco should tell him that your shelter allows things like this to happen. And that your policy is to let drugs run rampant on your property. What do you think he would say? That's not what happened. That's not true at all. Do you think you'd want to risk it, though? Do you think that you'd have the time and resources to fight with the police on this? I'm not going to fight with anyone. Because you're going to let Marco come back to work. He'll delete the photos and you'll be safe from any unnecessary investigations. Won't that work for everyone? So you're blackmailing me. Is that what's happening? I'm just protecting my son. And if that means having to bring down your shelter in the process, I will. Jesus, Beverly. I thought your son was a psychopath. But you're even worse. So he's coming back to work tomorrow, right? No. Okay, then we're going straight to the police. Come on. Beverly, we're already understaffed and underfunded as it is. I can't deal with this right now. Then I think you know what to do. Fine. I'll sign off on his community service hours. That's what you really want, isn't it? Yes. Then I'll do it. He can come in at the end of the month and I'll sign his stupid papers. But he is not going to work for me. He causes too much damage. Perfect. I'll tell him the good news and the photos will be deleted all once the hours are completed. Thanks, James. I knew you'd make the right decision. I'm coming in. Will my papers be ready? Yes. Just to be clear, you need me to say that you worked 60 total hours for me, right? Yes. Even though you didn't? That's the deal. And you don't feel remorseful for any of this? Not at all. You know, I feel very uncomfortable doing this. I've never been blackmailed before. Well, it's your own damn fault for being so mean to me. I'm coming in. James, what did you do? Oh, hi, Beverly. What's up? Marco just called me from jail. Oh, that. Yeah, he got arrested. Why? Didn't he tell you on the phone? He tried to, but... I was his one phone call and he was crying so much I just couldn't understand him. Then you should probably go down there and see what happened. No, you did this. So you're going to tell me what happened. Okay, sure. Remember how I caught him stealing from me? You got him arrested for stealing Twinkies? Cream pies and no. The point is, I knew he stole from me because I have cameras set up in our parking lot. Cameras that he knew about. But I guess he forgot all about them because the very next day, he went out into that same parking lot to take his little blackmail photos. So? So he staged them. Right after you showed me those photos, I checked our cameras. And you know what I saw? I saw Marco take a random guy off the street, pose him against our fence, and hand him the drugs. Then they had a little photo session, which means I caught him. One distributing illegal substances, two, committing blackmail, three, lying about his community service. All three of those are pretty bad, Beverly. Your son is in big trouble. You knew all along you never planned to sign off his hours. You were just waiting until he came back today. Yeah, I was waiting for his 60 hours of fake community service was up so that he'd be responsible for the full extent of his little blackmail scheme. And I made sure that the police were here when Marco came to pick up his papers. They cuffed him and took him away. No, he's my baby. I know he's a minor. They might go light on him, but with his pattern of criminal activity, I don't think they will. But it wasn't even real drugs. It was fake. It was just for the photos. So you knew about his plan, Beverly? Yes, I'll vouch for him. No need. I'm actually at the police station right now. Officer Barnes is standing over my shoulder reading these texts. It looks like you just confessed. Thanks. Now, Marco isn't the only one who's going to get locked up. You trick me? How dare you? You should probably wait at your house. The officers are on their way right now. I know a lot of people have terrible relatives, 
but I think mine are the absolute worst. This whole video could have been six hours long with all the terrible text messages I got from my psycho sister and her demon spawn, but I decided to just share the story of how I finally got the upper hand and forced them to take responsibility for their own awful behavior. Both Marco and Beverly are awaiting sentencing. So I'm not sure what the full punishment will be, but I'm guessing that community service is off the table for both of them. Personally, I hope they get maximum sentences. We'll see. My shelter is doing well, by the way. I'm applying for a few more grants next month, so fingers crossed on those. And to end on an extra happy note, do you remember Paul, the one-legged veteran that Marco insulted? Well, he just got hired at a hardware store. I'm really happy for him. Success stories like that are the reason I opened the shelter. I truly believe that if you work hard, you can overcome any obstacle. I just hope that one day Marco learns that too.